No rest for the weary. Like Fitzy says, back at it with another one. Not a show car, but I still get in here with a toothbrush and clean some stuff. Look. Cracked brake hose. Always got to go through your stuff, guys. Even though it's your prized possession, you may think you take great care of it. And you keep that paint waxed, which is great. There's nothing wrong with pulling the wheels off and getting up and in there. That's where the bad stuff happens. Well, here's what I'm up to. I repacked the wheel bearings in the front as a course of maintenance. Don't put a lot of miles on the car. It's no stranger to some high-speed passes, so relatively high speed we close course controlled environment of course you know i took the wheel bearings apart cleaned them they weren't bad and i said well while i'm under here let me let me clean the front end up a little bit like i said it's not a show car i do like to keep it clean under there and i noticed that one of the the brake hose over here had a little crack in it so i ordered some new stuff from inline tube let me show you what I have going on over here. Of course, more cleaning, more cleaning. Here's the brake hose that came out of it. Not original by any means. You know, replaced, yes, but come on, 35 years I've had this car over. Now, this is much worse than it was because I've been manipulating it to see how bad it really was. But there you go. That's a crack in the rubber housing for the brake hose. And, you know, then that allows the brake hose to expand when you hit the brakes. Then rupture happens. Then bad stuff happens. So what I did is I ordered the new little hard line that goes from the wheel cylinder to the um, lower end of the brake hose. And I bought new brake hoses, obviously, from inline tube. Let me show you what they send you. This is the original hard line. And this is the replacement. You know, we have the spring on the outside that the original one doesn't. And they make it all fancy looking with gold anodized and, you know, purple anodized for the, for the fittings here. Give it some bling in there, I guess. This is the original bracket that goes on the, uh, on the, the spindle side, the wheel side. Soaked it in the concrete and metal prep that we've done. Rinsed it off with the water. Same with the bolts. I have every reason to believe that the bracket that goes against the frame has never been off the car. I didn't take it off. My father and I put brake hoses or did brakes in this car for the first time. I guess the first time we did brakes. Had to be in 80, 88 or 89. But in any case, here's a new brake hose. Okay. Comes with the new horseshoe clips and one, one of these, you know, push-in clips, retainer clips. So I'll be reusing one. One is in the one is in the cooker. Getting cleaned up, then I'll rinse it off. So this is what you get when you do some maintenance. You say, oh boy, let me just clean it up, and you find yourself one step forward, two steps back, but all good stuff. So obviously I ordered parts for the other side. I even ordered a hose for the rear. Left front wheel well all put back together, new brake line off the wheel cylinder, new brake hose. Bearings were packed over there yesterday. I won't squeeze you guys in the corner over here, but yesterday the wheel bearings got cleaned and packed on the passenger side and the brake line's out and I'm just doing a lot more cleaning. Today, the goal is to just get the front back together. I know people are looking for me to get back on Mr. Jones and I do want to. I think the next portion of the project is we'll paint the underside of the trunk, finish some metal work in here so that we can paint the inside of the trunk. Because remember, what we did is we did not put full quarters on it. I just grafted on quarter patches to the original quarters. Which was a lot of work. A lot of fun, but a lot of work. And then the name of the game, you know, I have the, the trunk drop downs are all seam sealed in here. So that's all set. And yes, this is, this is new metal welded. Welded to the original car. So that... That came out well, but we need to get the underside here painted, get the inside metal work done, and then paint that, and really start getting to work on the frame. But before I can do that, I really do need to get the OG 
my F85 W31 back in service for the spring because obviously come springtime, all kinds of things happen. Regular work gets busier than it even is now. You know, there's yard work, the house has to get pressure washed. There's all kinds of stuff to do come springtime, not to mention some car shows and car cruises. So gotta thrash when it's 15 degrees outside. Tis the season to get your stuff under control. Well, that part's a wrap. My daughter came down and helped me bleed the brakes. We did do some cleaning under here. Lots and lots of dust. Again, not a show car. See, I'm missing some paint on the frame back there, but there's the new brake lines. You know, this, this car has really never been a part. It's just only ever been, you know, cleaned up and freshened up over the years. Certainly, Alyssa's convertible, although it looks ratty on the outside, is way nicer than, uh, than the underside of this car. Let's see here if I can show you. See, it's just... I mean, it's clean. The oil pan paint's kind of coming off, but I did clear all that steering linkage years and years ago, but like Big J said, it did turn yellow. That's probably 20, uh, 25 years ago. I put a new front end steering linkage in there. So that part is all done and good. What I'm going to do next, I know this header gasket is making a little bit of a tick, tick, tick noise, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna put new header gaskets, not head gaskets, header gaskets. Relatively non-eventful slipping the header gasket out. This is a Felpro header gasket that I re re installed years ago. You can see how it's blown between the two center ports. Now what I did is I bought a hooker header set, hooker brand, at least that's what they tell me it is. So the shortcoming is that you don't have the cheater hooks. You know, the cheater hooks where you can keep a bolt started and just slip the gasket in there. That's good, and that's nice, but these seem to not last. So I bought hooker header gaskets for the hooker super comps that are on it. I'm going to put these babies in. They're a little bit thicker. Give me a little bit more of a squish. These didn't do too bad. I mean, I've had Mr. Gasket. I've had all kinds of stuff over the years these didn't do too bad you can definitely see how they're leaking you know i guess next time the motor's out we'll you know make sure that those headers are nice and nice and flat i'd like to keep using those they've been on there a long long time actually john was over yesterday and we were talking about how next time the motor's out i'm gonna make these headers chalk white i did them like a chalk gray years ago and they've held up pretty well but the white would be kind of cool all right, let's slip a new one in and see how that goes. Working on this car is a little bit different for me than working on all the other ones. A lot of times this car, lately anyway, in the last few years, a lot of times it doesn't get the, the attention that it ought to get. And that's because, you know, I'm building a Alyssa car. Uh, you know, even years ago, Nicholas's first car, the uh, black WRX, we had to do some strut tower work in that. And then, obviously, Mr. Jones over there, he takes a lot of my time. So my car just kind of, you know, not that it gets neglected, it just gets, just gets put to work, you know, just gets used. So I think it's time. I think it's time, you know, we're getting some recognition out there. The car is going to be out at car shows and cruises like it always is. And it should, you know, not have dirty wheel wells and blown header gaskets. So there we go. Can you see that? That's what we're going to install here now momentarily. And let's, let's see how it goes, you know. It's kind of nostalgic for me to work on this car it's kind of cool you know i mean a lot of buddies have helped me work on it over the years um obviously my brother has done some work on it you know it's fun it's fun you know sometimes you know i remember working on it with my father when we first got the car that was fun too you know <laughs> He didn't really know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> he thought he did, but he didn't. 
you know, I mean, you know, back then it wasn't, we weren't going crazy with restoration stuff. You know, back then it was just my first car. You know what I do? I do this silly little thing. I, as the header bolts come out, I just put them in order. I do that with spark plugs. And sometimes I even try and do that with lug nuts. Because sometimes, you know, in and out, the threads just like one another. When you take a bolt, you put it in a different hole, and you realize, what the hell? It didn't come out this hard. Well, sometimes they gall up and chase each other in a certain way, and then they don't like going back together. So we're going to just put it together with the bolts as they came out. Simple as that. Just kind of get them started. You know, in the old, these Oldsmobiles, you can get to the back side of the header bolt. Other than the center one, you can get to the back side of the bolts, meaning you can spray a little, you know, what in there just to kind of get them going. There is one over here. You guys know what I'm talking about. There is one that this may get turned into time lapse because there's a little bit of cursing and a little bit of finagling to get it. And I don't even know how. Sometimes I do it. Let's get this one started. I think I've actually held it with a pair of needle nose or something and kind of got it in there. It's cool, you know. I remember it's getting long enough ago that I can say, I remember taking this motor out to paint it. I remember doing this, putting this tranny in it. It's definitely. Drop it, don't drop it. It's definitely a hot rod, you know, it's not it's not a concourse trailer queen car, you know. It's definitely been let's see now I gotta kind of reach in here. They put hooker was nice enough to put that nice little handle on the back of the header. You can grab that sucker and put it where you want. Alright. We're down to one. We're down to one. Let me get a let me get a pair of needle nose here. So let's talk about a a, <laughs> a cautionary tale, as it were. You know these wonderful ratchet wrenches. These ratchet wrenches are great, except when you put them in a place where they can't get out. You know, you put the wrench in reverse, and you ratchet wrench a bolt out up against a header tube who's done that now what the heck do you do you can't get the bolt out certainly can't get it back in because you got you got the wrench in the wrong in the wrong gear you got it in reverse you can't get it back in so I know it's tempting I really do guys I know it's tempting to get a ratchet wrench on there and zip the header bolts out. I advise you to refrain from that exercise. Unless it's like the first two bolts here. Because there's nothing that you're going to back up against. So, look, that's, that's that. Gas gets in, all the bolts are started. It doesn't take too long. You know, as long as you're not contending with rusted bolts. And rusty old crappy headers. You know, this car has an H pipe. So that means this header is bolted via the collector to ultimately the other header. That's a big advantage sometimes because you don't take the header bolts off and now the whole single exhaust system on the one side is kind of laying over and fighting you. So that's that. I wish I had more to share with you guys. But that's a that's a header gasket replacement and then I just start in the middle and work my way I have it work my way out it's 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 you know oh ho ho see what I did oh these I can do this one I can do these front two I can do and you know what you can you can use them going in as long as as long as you don't jam the ratchet wrench, sometimes they're a little tight and you get the ratchet wrench, these are 716 bolts, and you get the ratchet wrench stuck on the bolt head. It's a real pain in the ass to get it out. Pain in the, I don't know, can we say that? So we'll do the driver's side gasket now. You can see the gasket is, is white and doesn't match, but this is what I'm talking about here. See on the back side, this bolt 
goes right up into the head and you can get a little bit of juice in there. Let it kind of effervesce down in there. Can't do the middle one, which we knew that. So the only thing you gotta contend with on this side is the steering column and the dipstick tube. All right, good, uneventful. Everything went fine, no broken bolts, no screaming, yelling, no throwing tools. You're just gonna put the wheels back on it and we're gonna say that this chapter of the seasonal maintenance, multi-seasonal maintenance is done. I got the inside of the wheels cleaned up, wiped down. We might be putting tires on the car this year. They're good, but they're old. We'll see, the trailer also needs new tires. Okay, well there you have it. After some much needed and some, I guess evidently overdue maintenance, the OG's back on its haunches in the front anyway. Just got back from Napa. Bill over there takes really good care of me. What I did is I bought a bunch of stuff to do some more maintenance on the back of the OG. We're gonna change the rear end oil and we're gonna address that rear brake hose. No rest for the weary. Again, a rainy sun, rainy, what is today? Saturday, so rainy Saturday. Let's go underneath the car and make some progress. I'll show you what I'm doing. Yesterday after work, success. Pulled the car out, took it around the neighborhood. Did a nice one through four blast. Runs good. Runs just fine. As Stevie B likes to tell me, ain't nothing wrong with that car. That car runs damn good. So what I am going to do now, obviously I've turned it around. You're going to get a look at this end of the car for a little bit. Going to change that gear oil. Going to change that rear brake hose. We'll do some more cleaning underneath. This way we know with all new brake hoses, we'll have all new brake fluid. I'll have new gear oil. Take a look at the incorrect W27 cover. It is correct for 70s, you know, with the option. I like the way it looks. My car, my way. That's how it's going. So there you have it. I'll pop the covers off. I'll show you what's in there, which is a, uh, a Richmond 390 set. The other gear set, original gear set, did have a little bit of a howl to it. So we put a, Mike and I did years back, we put a 390 set in there with uh, new clutches. So we'll clean things up as we're in there, show you the brake hose. I'm taking it out. I'm changing it. I'm not going to look at it and think about it. It's going to, in my mind, I'll have all new brake hoses with all new brake fluid. New gear oil, and then we'll move to the tranny. Definitely some benefits behind changing the rear end oil before it gets nasty. One is that you want to maintain clean oil in your rear gear set. Two, it smells so much better. When you have funky, burnt up gear oil, ugh, gosh, it stinks the whole garage up. But what I thought we'd take a minute to do here is talk about Oldsmobile rear ends. I know we did it in a couple of Mr. Jones videos way back when. So let's talk about this. This is an O rear. And it's, a, it's basically an Oldsmobile exclusive rear end. You won't see it in Chevys. What it is is a 12 bolt cover. Not to be confused with the Chevy 12-bolt cover, where you can ascertain that a 12-bolt cover in a Chevy is a 12-bolt rear. Such is not the case here in Oldsmobile, in the confusing world of Oldsmobiles. It's a 10-bolt ring gear. It's an 8.5-inch ring gear. It's a 10-bolt. It's got a little larger bolts than you would find in a Chevy rear. Plenty stout. I guess uh, this particular carrier oh, I'm on the, is for the 342 and up 588. Okay, 28 spline axles. It's got a 42227 part number rear end housing. And what's in here? These are Richmond gears that Mike and I put in years and years ago that I was able to get through um, Supercars Unlimited. And uh, what you have here is a 39 tooth ring gear and a 10 tooth pinion gear. And that gives you a 3.90 to one. The original gears were 4113, I believe, and that gives you a 3.91 to one. That's the original rear for the car. It is a stamped 342 housing. 
The original rear in this car was a 342. And those gears were a little bit worn and it just wasn't what I wanted at the time. So instead of putting back in what I didn't want, we put in 390s. Long, long time ago. 30 years ago. That's the story. Okay. Uh, I'll put a new gasket in there. I'll fill it up. I did check to make sure the fill plug could come loose before I took the rear end oil out. How many guys have been burned there, right? You pull the cover off, get the gear oil out, and then you can't get the fill plug off. But this is not a, not a rusty car. So, all right, I'll put this all back together and then get working on the rear axle hose. Everything works better clean. I cleaned this cover. You know, you get a little bit of schmutz in those little nooks and crannies there. So it pays to get a little bit of a brush and clean it up. You're not going to have this cover off all the time. But it's it's pretty attractive. I know we like it. So what you'll need is a Felpro gasket number RDS55008. And it's listed like this. See if you guys can focus. It says engine Oldsmobile 250, 230, 350, 400 with, uh, see how it says O in quotes with O type axle. It's important. The O type axle is a different beast like we've just discussed. So if you have a cutlass built somewhere else, a little later date, you might have a corporate 10 bolt. It'll have the little cookies cut out on the sides at you know three o'clock and nine o'clock this gasket actually has a little indicator top okay now you can use a little bit of rtv if you want a little bit of gasket sealant you know i had a little bit on there before i think just out of caution but the flange on the rear end is ultra ultra flat and this is obviously really mint so I'm just going to put it on gasket style. I don't like the way it looks with silicone spooching out the sides. And then it's a tedious process to trim that all off. Let's bolt this thing up. All the bolts are cleaned up. Obviously, the posi tag is all cleaned up. Not that it was really nasty. Let's bolt it up and put fluid in it. Okay, cover's on. And now I'm going to put some gear oil in it. I just use regular whatever's on sale, Gear Oil High Performance. In this case, it's that brand, 8090. This is what I've been using for a very long time by CRC, Equitorque. You know, friction modifier. Prevents the clutches in the posi rear end from chattering. Very important that you put this in. That's why that fancy little tag is hanging off the rear end cover. To use posi traction fluid. Cannot forget this stuff, guys, or you will be... Da -da 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 -da. You know, you'll be... You'll be feeling that. I'm sure most of you guys already know this, but uh, again, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I put this in and then people will think I forgot. There it is. Going in. Well, for those of you who are watching, I cannot be happier that I've decided to do all this. You know, when you have something this long, <laughs> you kind of grow old together. And part of growing old is thinking that you just did something. I know I even said that rear brake hose isn't that old because I put stainless steel brake lines on it. This brake hose is old. Now, it's not as failed as the front one. Let me see if I get my bench grinder light on here. It's not as bad as the front one was. But you see that little bubble right there? That is it starting to break down. And this brake hose has been on that rear axle for long enough that it's begun to dry rot. See that? So, this, this makes, this warms my heart <laughs> that I'm spending time doing this. This is what you get when you order the new, excuse me, I have to put you down a second. When you order the new brake hose, unfortunately, it doesn't come with the whole, with the retainer clip, which is why you save them even when you get Parts that do come with them, save the old ones. Here's the new hose. Minty, minty, right? So, really, really worthwhile doing. I can't stress it enough. I 
I encourage everyone, those of you who do watch, you know, uh, this is the type of stuff that you can prevent. You can prevent relative catastrophic failure if you do a little bit of PM, a little bit of preventative maintenance. So I'm happy I'm doing it. I'll put this thing in, hook up those brake lines, and I guess what we'll do is wait for somebody to come home and give me a hand bleeding the brakes. Time to put the wheels on. Time to say we're done for the weekend. Drained a little bit of tranny oil out. Put some synthetic gear oil in there. Obviously, we put the rear end cover back on, filled that with oil. I did change the rear brake hose like we've seen. Uh, Alyssa helped me bleed the brakes this morning. Wheels are all cleaned up inside, wiped down. Get that road grime and any kind of grease and stuff off the inside of the wheels whenever they're off. This way it's not a huge project. And we'll uh, go ahead and put the wheels back on it. Who can talk to me about dry ice blasting? That might be an option. Well, after another weekend long thrash on the car, here's where I'm at. And I guess in order to be worthy of that license plate, we need to have a little bit of cleanliness under here. And that's what we're looking at, okay? It might not look any different, but it looks a lot different to me. And in addition to the front brake hoses and getting the wheel bearings packed in the front, we did the rear brake hose. We did the rear diff oil. We did tranny oil. It's pretty much clean the brakes, clean, clean the brake shoes, clean the inside of the brake drums. Lots of wiping, lots of rubbing, lots of rubbing, lots of wiping. And there you have it. I'm going to drop it down now on the ground. The wheel wheels have been wiped down. You know, inside, this car has never had quarters. This car has really never been apart, like I've said a million times. You know, inside the, the wheel well has never been body worked. It's just original stuff. Original stuff. So, I mean, other than the air shocks and the W27 cover, it's, uh, the body's pretty much as it was. Okay. We're going to clean the shop up. We're going to start putting some stuff away. We actually had a very, very cool viewer from all the way over in Australia has offered to buy the original passenger side scoop off the OG. Sorry, that is not for sale. <laughs> that is going to stay here. It'll be garage art here with all the other W31 related things. But okay, that's it for the seasonal maintenance at this chapter really everything else is just cleaning it's kind of gotten front to back you know top to bottom i did plugs and points and condenser last year i've had the plugs out like i said before with the carburetor i put the plugs out and just kind of purge the cylinders but lots of cleaning this is what happens when you build two cars next to it there's a lot of dust up in here i want to clean up I started wiping the spare tire down, and you know what? It's Miller time. It's Sunday. Looks good enough. Okay, I think this is the close. Thanks for watching. Next video will be of... Not quite sure. I'm sure something cool. At least Joe, John, and I think it's cool. Hey, for those who are watching, we really appreciate it. If you think you know somebody who wants to see some of these videos, go ahead and share them. We're kind of getting low on views, guys. Uh, the novelty may have worn off for some of you, but for a lot of you, you're still sticking around, and we really, really appreciate it. So pass it on. See what happens. Okay. Get your cars ready. Spring is coming. <laughs>